don't know if you're like me, but uh, when I woke up this morning and read the news about a promising study on the drug remdesivir, I went immediately to my fish tank and looked around for something, anything to ingest. Here's Dr. Fauci, or the big Fauci, as I like to call him, talking about the results. The data shows that remdesivir has a clear-cut, significant, positive effect in diminishing the time to recovery. This is really quite important for a number of reasons, and I'll give you the data. It's highly significant. If you look at the time to recovery being shorter in the remdesivir arm, it was 11 days compared to 15 days. And that's a p-value for the scientists who are listening of 0 0.001. So that's something that, although a 31% improvement doesn't seem like a knockout 100%. It is a very important proof of concept because what it is proven is that a drug can block this virus. That's really great news. Uh, the study doesn't show that we have a silver bullet or a cure, but it does seem to cut the death rate of patients with serious symptoms from COVID-19. That's great news, right? The media sure thinks so. Not so much because people might die a little bit less frequently, but because the drug was not hydroxychloroquine. Because if it was hydroxychloroquine, then Trump might get credit, and that is much worse than a few extra thousand people on ventilators. The Washington Post highlighted this very common line of analysis with this piece from uh, Philip Bump. Trump and Fox went all in on coronavirus silver bullet, but maybe the wrong one. Ah, you see, Trump was telling everyone uh, and he was going to be everyone was going to be saved by hydroxychloroquine. But actually, it's remdesivir that made a difference in the study. What a moron. Now, there's a little problem with this analysis, though, because in the very same press conference where Trump introduced hydroxychloroquine to most of the world, he also introduced a little something called remdesivir. And honestly, the only reason I remember that he mentioned it during that press conference was the way he pronounced it. Because, you know, it was the first time the guy's saying it. And uh, the president went with like the high class French pronunciation, remdesivir. There are promising therapies produced by Gilead, and that's uh, remdesivir, remdesivir. <laughs> and that's a drug used for other purposes that's been out and said very good results for other purposes, but it seems to have a very good result having to do with this virus. Remdesivir. Remdesivir. I like that. It was like classier. Voulez-vous coucher avec moi? Remdesivir. I remember when that old road, uh, Rolls Royce kind of pulled up in the country next to the other old Rolls Royce and pulled down the window. And then the one rich guy said, excuse me, do you have any remdesivir? And then the other rich guy says, but of course. And then he speeds off. And I think there's like a like an older like hick guy that like gets some out of control American. And he says, can you please pass the hydroxychloroquine? That's how I remember it, at least. I've run out of things to watch on Netflix that I've been taking at a lot of random 80s commercials. So you'll have to forgive me. You also remember that this Trump conference uh, that he was doing, this happened afterward uh, when a man uh, died. Um, that was a big deal. If you remember, he ingested fish tank cleaner, which had chloroquine phosphate in it, something that does have a similar name, but is not the same thing. Hmm, how does that work? Now, Donald Trump, of course, did not tell anyone to ingest fish tank cleaner. In fact, he didn't tell anyone to ingest the medication hydroxychloroquine. He listed off a few drugs that showed some promise, but the media went insane anyway, claiming that essentially Donald Trump killed this man. He should have known that these words have meaning and hyping these unproven drugs has just cost someone his life. I have a different view. Even if Donald Trump spent three hours every day at a press conference telling the entire country directly to consume any chemical in their house that cleans a fish tank, that appropriate death toll of that whole scenario should be zero. And no offense to the guy who died, but you know the amount of national news stories written about this death should also be zero. The only reason it made news at all is because the NBC uh, family of news companies found a path to bashing Trump. Trump could say it is, you know, basically pretty much a cure.
would be your message to the American public? Oh my God, don't take anything. I don't believe anything. Don't believe anything the president says and his people because they don't know what they're talking about. It's a weird attitude to have right after your husband's died and it's something that you helped along with if it's unintentional. Now, this story goes from oddly sort of sad local story to big time national crisis because the president is now responsible. But if you're in the media, doesn't the story seem a little too perfect? Isn't it a little suspicious? Is there any part of you that thinks that it's a little doubtful that some couple would just start guzzling fish tank cleaner because the president mentioned a promising medical study? Certainly sounded shady to me. And apparently also to Elena Goodwin of the uh, Washington Free Beacon. She showed that the victim and his wife were both Democratic donors, including specific donations to Hillary Clinton and a relatively obscure left-leaning pro-science organization called the 314 Action Fund. Would this make you a little suspicious? I mean, it made me suspicious. Someone who donates to Hillary Clinton is just going to take Donald Trump's word as gospel? And someone who supposedly supports good science doesn't even check the internet to see if the fish tank cleaner is the same as the medication? What an idiot he must be, right? Except that doesn't all seem to be true, according to the people who knew him best. Quote, what bothers me about this is that Gary was a very intelligent man, a retired mechanical engineer who designed systems for John Deere in Waterloo, Iowa. And I really can't see the scenario where Gary would say, yes, please, I would love to drink some of that koi fish tank cleaner, one of his uh, close friends told the Beacon. Um, it just doesn't make any sense. And I got to say, it's, that's kind of how I feel, too. Other friends said that his wife was verbally abusive to him in public, destroyed his possessions, and was charged with domestic abuse against him. Another friend noted that she regularly prepared vitamin cocktails for him. Wouldn't this make you suspicious of this story? Blaze TV's Steven Crowder found it a little weird, too. So he decided to call the NBC reporter and help out. And obviously you guys do, uh, do great journalism there at NBC News. So I wanted to know if, if you had discovered, if you came upon this information or can confirm that she's a Democratic donor who gave to Hillary in 2016 and repeatedly throughout her yeah, I, I don't know any. I don't know anything uh, that's not even relevant to the story, quite frankly. Well, isn't and it, isn't it relevant because it. she said that she did it because Trump told her to? And there are multiple sources here that show she was virulently anti-Trump as an activist for a long time. So it seems peculiar that she would all of a sudden decide to take medical advice from Donald Trump when she also gave to uh, pro-science, anti-right-wing, anti-science ideology, uh, as it's stated here, uh, nonprofits. Okay. Do you, do you, I mean, is, do you have a question for me? I mean, this sounds like it's your story. Well, I, I am asking if you knew this when you posted the story, because it seems like it would be pretty relevant, no? That someone went out there saying no one should yeah, trust no, President I, I Trump, think, I and think she's that, a... I think that you, I think that you have a, a specific story that you're trying to tell, and that's totally cool. No, see, I think that you did. It's your story. You can take it. I don't, I don't want the credit. I just want to make sure the truth is out there, and I can send you all of this evidence. If, if you would, I think that you have a story to tell, and I wish you good luck. I think you have the story. truth to tell I, here, I and I would like to provide it to you, I, NBC I News. Do you understand I, that this is the definition of I fake news at this it. point? I can provide you evidence right now that she was. Oh, so rude. I can't believe she would hang up on someone trying to help like that. Manners. Authorities apparently did find all of this a little interesting. They contacted the Free Beacon to get the tapes of the conversations and are looking into the incident. It hasn't officially been called a murder yet, but it is under investigation. I know I found it suspicious from the beginning. You probably found it suspicious, too. The Washington Free Beacon found it suspicious. Steven Crowder found it suspicious. Given the details, who wouldn't? Apparently, NBC News didn't. Neither did anyone else in the entire mainstream media. Why? Because this random guy and his possible murder filled a hole that needed filling. The media needed a story to target Trump that day, and this was it. A few weeks later, they would latch on to a story that claimed calls to poison control had increased. Yes, it was almost immediately 
debunked, but that didn't matter either. These stories serve their purposes. Everyone moves on and no consequences ever occur for those involved. When you start your coverage with what you believe is an incontrovertible truth that Donald Trump is not only involved somehow in every single story, but that he is always the ultimate villain, you physically cannot get the story right. This is our media today, and I don't think it's changing tomorrow. Makes you just kind of want to sit back and ingest some fish tank cleaner and call it a day.